Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast, formerly the uh, Libertarian Counterpoint podcast. <clears throat> we are coming at you on December 30th, end of the year. Uh, so it looks like we're finally out of 2020. But before we get into any of the topics, uh, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty. Uh, he is a retired engineer in the state of California. <clears throat> And in our upper right-hand corner, we have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Everett, who is a pilot in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. And so let's uh, let's dive into some of these uh, kind of final wrenching issues of 2020 here. So the vaccine, you know, it sounds like, you know, the vaccines here, they're kind of figuring out ways to get that vaccine out to the public. And of course... Uh, somehow race is getting all tangled up in that. And how couldn't it? I mean, it's 2020 and, you know, half of the half of the problems have all been about uh, making everything about race. So why not the vaccine, too? So um, this has been something that's uh, being kicked around at first when the CDC, I think, was giving out directions on this. Uh, they wanted to include uh, or they wanted to go toward frontline workers over the elderly, I guess, prioritize that over the elderly because they thought that would better uh, help people of, I guess, people of color, or uh, I'm not sure which you know groups they were trying to characterize it as. But regardless, it wasn't about just simply protecting lives, which is, <laughs> I thought, what sure. the whole point of our government agencies were supposed to be about. Right. So, uh, and, and I think they've, they've self-corrected a little since then, but it's still just part of this craziness of 2020 that we can't get out of race. Do you guys have any thoughts on that whole thing? Well, you know, the whole, the whole idea is that everything now in our societies, you have to see it through the, the lens of race. You know, in 1963, when George Wallace was being inaugurated, he said segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. That's my fake accent from, from of George Wallace. Sounds just you know, like normal. <laughs> 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 you know, we are still living George Wallace's vision of America. Okay, we are still living that vision. We cannot use science and reason to do anything now, okay? Your character does not matter. Your competence, that doesn't matter. Your conduct doesn't matter. It's just your race, okay? So now we have the vaccine. The vaccine is here to help us, to save us from this, this horrible thing that China unleashed in the world. But we have to consider race because we have to make up for the past injustices. And all this is about, all they're trying to do is to make all you guys, all you white guys, they're gonna make all of you guys criminals and they're gonna make people like me victims. But this is what is going on in our society. Race <laughs> is becoming the toxic thing that is gonna destroy our great land because we cannot see things through science and reason anymore. We could only see it through race. And these white liberals who are trying to save us is going to destroy America unless we do something and do something fast about it. Well, if I was going to imitate someone from the South, <laughs> I would use a bit more of a draw. That, you know, sounds, that sounds better, Tim. <laughs> all, I think you have Leon on accent. <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> you, you just one up, Julian. You got it. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, almost offended. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, if demand is high for this vaccine, and uh, it, it's it came in, uh, it was apparently rushed through the normal FDA process. Uh, Trump Trump threatened to fire the FDA chief if he didn't approve it the following day. So. Uh, Maybe that was all pomp and circumstance, but it was uh, anyway, uh, apparently uh, rush through. And, and uh, of course, we all trust the FDA when they say that it's safe and effective, of course, because it's a government agency. I mean, how, how can you not trust the FDA, apparently? Um, so 
uh, with that said, and with, the, you know, the sarcasm dripping from what I just said, you'll probably, um, you know, maybe it's not such a good idea to be picked as the uh, first recipients of an untested vaccine. Perhaps you're, you're part of the animal studies that they didn't do the animal studies <laughs> of. And it, and it could be that, you know, maybe your race or, or your, you know, I, kn I know they're giving it to uh, prisoners in prison. Yes. Uh, and so first, and so, you know, maybe you could, you could make an argument. I, I don't think it's true. I hope it's not true. But, you know, that, uh, you know, we're going to just test it out on them. And if it works fine for them, it ought to work fine for everyone else. And then we'll, you know, after it's thoroughly tested with all all these uh, uh, these other minions, then we'll we'll give it to the to the white folk after that, you know. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, mean, I, I don't know after, what else to think. After they've used after the in the name of the name of race equity, they've used us as guinea pigs. Exactly. Then they'll give it to you guys. Right? Yes. yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't that I mean wouldn't that be uh, in in keeping with uh, the government's um, what what is done for uh, uh, for the races that that are not uh, in the majority the minority races the minority oh minority, minority. Yeah. Okay. yeah so my mino minorities are um, you know the, in the past have, have been more uh, damaged and and held back uh, from actions of the government in various ways and you can you know from the minimum wage to you know those those uh just so many of their programs that they the government set out to tr you know, supposedly to you know to to help um, minorities uh, get a lot get get going in through the american system and so on and so forth and it's it's turned out to like so many other things the government does backfire and cause more problems than they tr they tried to solve initially so um, th this could be just an, another one of those things. Yeah, let's uh, let's help out the poor unfortunates uh, that want the the vaccine, but uh, you know for whatever reason. I mean, <laughs> the stuff is free, so there therefore, what? Oh, never mind. Uh, I was going to go into <laughs> supply demand curve there, you know. So it's free, so the price is down. So what happens? Supply drops and demand jump. Demand jumps. Supply goes down. Whenever you hold the price uh, down, and price is yeah. zero now. So what does that do? <laughs> anyway, uh, so the demand is high, the supply is low, and we're just going to give it to the people that that we think we're going to help. And uh, I don't know. Maybe it, it may be okay. It may be safe and effective, but then again, on the other hand, we're going to find out. And those are the people that we're going to find out from. Yeah. Well, well, the road, just, you, know, you know, but, but, but the, the truth is the road to hell is always paved with good intentions by the government. Yes. You know, always, you know, slavery yes. was legal. Jim Crow was legal. The Great Society was legal. All of it yeah. was legal. Okay? And, and, and the road time, to hell is always paved by good intentions of the government. Always. It, every time you know is as bad as some of these ideas sound today back then they literally had good reasons for doing yeah, it. of course, of course. <laughs> look so. at look at look at all the fanfare of the great society which is a the, the most expansive program ever done in the united states in terms of social mm -hmm. welfare and that kind of stuff look at the effects of it today and back then yeah. it was the most wonderful thing that yeah. that was better than sliced bread and yeah, look at what yeah. it have done to Black America in particular, and the inner cities of America, and to public education. Look at what it have done. You know, this was great that... and wonderful back then in 1965 when Lyndon Johnson was probably the most racist person who ever sat in the White House. Lyndon, and, when Lyndon Johnson brought this up for us, look at it. And, and he talked the same way too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> So Tim, if, Tim, I'm if getting that, the impression that he didn't he didn't like my fake southern accent. You know? I'm getting the impression, you know. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't be able to to uh, to replicate your island accent. Either, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'd I'd be far behind that one. So uh, a southern uh, island accent. Yeah, southern <laughs> island accent. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, well, what what part of? Uh, Trinidad and Tobago, are you from? <laughs> I'm from the south side. I'm from the south, yes. I'm from, I'm from the south, yes. I'm from the south. 
I was literally, I was literally born yeah. in the south and raised in the south. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's it right there. That explains a lot. So uh, yes. <laughs> So uh, if the audience is coming to listen to the government getting uh, bashed, I mean, they've come to the right place, but we do it in style. Okay. We have fun. Indeed. You know? Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, as far as the, the race issue goes though, too, you know, on this whole vaccine thing, you know, the, the, the crazy thing is, is that they can't even sort of decide in their sort of warped leftist vision on this whole identity thing over what what it is we're supposed to be doing i mean so they're they're claiming that they're trying to help disadvantaged communities supposedly by not giving old people who seem to be the most disadvantaged by this whole covid yeah. Yeah. Right? but, yeah. but regardless yeah. you know that they, they they claim they're helping these uh, historically disadvantaged groups by by not giving it maybe to the old people first well, at least that was their initial plan but then they, they literally had a policy, I think it was at a college or someplace else, where they were going to say that everybody who came here has to have the vaccine. However, if you're a person of color, uh, you can be exempt from getting the vaccine just because you're, it's voluntary for you. But for everybody else, it's not voluntary, which is just like, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> the, Indians, the Indians are attacking the settlers, so the cavalry is going to hang out at the fort. <laughs> <laughs> protect the fort at all costs <laughs> yeah yeah forget about those settlers out there those old people yeah. <laughs> pretty soon you the know, mission becomes the fort <laughs> yeah. and, and, talk, and talk about the most vulnerable por portions of our society in in new york in the first wave about 42 percent or 45 percent of the people who died were older folks in those in those homes because because um who died from COVID? Because Andrew Cuomo came out with his with his nonsensical policy, well, his his deadly policy, the word forced the nursing home to take back people who are COVID positive, end up killing a whole bunch of people. And today, everybody think Andrew Cuomo is one of the greatest governors who managed, uh, who did a great job in managing the the virus, uh, the infections, and everything in New York. Everybody think he's so wonderful, and this man directly caused the death of I don't know about seven thousand people directly. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was in that 40 percentile uh, during the first uh, part. I, I, I don't know. I think actually it's still that. It's still 40 percent of the total. I'm not sure. Probably we're, so. I think, in, I think you probably remember we're in that. nursing homes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that, that's more than 7,000. That's quite a, quite a few. Yeah. Oh, you're thinking 7,000 in, in, in New York. York. In New York oh, only. Okay. Gotcha. In New York yeah. only, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well. But, but nationwide, I think you're correct. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the... the, the um, it's a lot more than seven thousand from from nursing homes. I was just I was just talking about New York City and and Andrew Cuomo, New York New York State and Andrew Cuomo. Yeah, you know th there was one thing I wanted to pick up on as well too. When you focused on race, Leon, you, well, which is what they focused on. So I'm yeah. not blaming you, but but you said you know they were trying to vilify um, the, the you know us white guys and stuff, you know, uh, uh, and uh, victimize. You guys, I guess, <laughs> which I hate saying you guys because and, and us guys because it, it makes it sound like we're all somehow on a team based upon our skin color, which is just that's terrible. right, yes, yes. But you know, I mean, I think we're all friends because we're individuals, not because we somehow spotted certain skin colors, you know? <laughs> right? Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> but, but 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 anyway, you know, one of the crazy things with all this, I mean, is. I, I think, though, that there is something to this vilification, though, uh, over time, you know, I, I think what we're seeing in the left, I wouldn't even bring this up on this particular topic, but I just heard about it in the news. And, um, you know, I think that some of these lefties get so uh, they're, they're so into this. They're, they've so totally bought into this religion of, of identity politics that if they're white, suddenly they start trying to associate themselves as not white. And, um, you know, Alec Baldwin's wife recently was just outed as not being Hispanic. I guess <laughs> and apparently she lived like 20 years with a fake accent. <laughs> she, she was literally born in Boston, but she tried to talk like she was Hispanic and, and she would, uh, you know, act like a, she, she called herself Hillary. Well, the real she, name was I think she said she, I think she actually said she was born in Spain. Yeah. <laughs> she said she was born in Spain, and that's why she used to have this accent where um oh she is even forget English words like cucumber and exactly. things like that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was on a cooking show when she tried to act like she had a Spanish accent and was trying to say, how do you say, uh, and the host says, cucumber? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cucumber. <laughs> the woman was born in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Como se dice. Exactly. Uh, That's what you would have expected her to say. Como se dice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's just, it, it's really, it's like, it's, it's such a religion for them that like, you know, Elizabeth Warren, you know, she has to associate that she has Indian heritage when apparently she's like one, two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me this. And, so yeah, and I, you, is, is Alec throwing a hissy fit about all this? I don't know. I know he's a, He's he's defending he's defending his wife. He's defending his wife. <laughs> defending his uh, yeah, she's Spanish. Don't yeah. don't rock. The I mean, it's un yeah. unbelievable. You she's know what I'm talking whatever. about. I mean, we had other examples of this association of with uh with with minority populations. We had uh, Rachel Doloza, who is who is as white as as white can be, and was claiming to be um a black person, a light skinned black person. And then we had another famous case. I don't remember. I don't remember the the person involved with that. But the point is, though, you're right about this. There is this thing out there that is called white guilt. And white guilt does make people do a bunch of stupid things and say a bunch of stupid things. I wish they'll do their stupidity. I wish their stupidity will extend to the fact that they'll pay me some money and I'll forgive them for all their damn nonsense. <laughs> so reparations. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'll take well, their reparations if it's going to come out of their own pockets. Don't, don't try to make the government pay me. Don't make them do that. Take it out of their own pockets, and I'll take it. And then I'll forgive them for all their damn nonsense. <laughs> well, I didn't want to burst any bubbles, but uh, because I may, uh, there may be something in it for me, I have to uh, just, just break the news that after all is said and done, I really am black. <laughs> <laughs> Did you trace your ancestry back like 100,000 yeah. years? Yeah, 100,000 years, yeah. <laughs> Tim, you had you had us all fooled, man. You had us all fooled. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Uh, it's hard to cover up, but uh, you know now I'm, I might as well come out of the closet now that I uh, you. have have something to gain from the whole thing, reparations wise. Maybe, maybe yeah. Tim, we better check our own map. We, we might be possible. You never know. Right? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. There's. They say Geng Genghis Khan is. Uh, you can a ton of people can like a huge percentage of uh, people on the earth can trace their ancestry. You got to go back a long way though, Jason, uh, to <laughs> Gen Genghis Khan because he yeah. fathered so many children. You know. He, yeah. Yeah. He he, he, that guy got around. Let me tell you. He, he didn't. He didn't make it to Africa, though. I don't think he, <laughs> he made it to the edge of no, the Europe. No, but did, did Africa make it to Genghis? You know, yeah. they, they, they who knows? Come up. Yeah. Yes, who knows? <laughs> well, you know, as uh, as speaking of other COVID issues, you know, though, there's uh, one of the other hmm. oddball things that's been happening aside from race is. Um, you know, people have been uh, now, I guess, jockeying to get in line for the vaccine as well. And in some cases, we have this issue where politicians, uh, you know, want to show that they're on board with it. And so, you know, they, they may be, I guess, jumping in line, I guess you might say, in order to uh, get the vaccine first. But, you know, I, I think it's kind of a complicated issue. So uh, AOC and some of these other politicians were uh, you know, want to be shown, yeah, I guess, you know, getting the vaccine. And I, I can understand why, if they were really trying to promote the vaccine, they want to show that they believe it's safe. But in, in, in this case, though, she's had a lot of critics uh, all the way from the uh, diverse opposites of Rand Paul to um, Ilhan Omar, uh, both coming out and saying that, you know, hey, what the heck's AOC getting it for? She's not in this, you know, uh, uh, risk category. Why should she get it? Yeah. And so it's kind of interesting watching politicians attack each other over who's getting the vaccine first. So, you know, yeah. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that. No, I could, I could understand. Uh, I mean, you know, people in government getting the vaccine from a continuation of government standpoint, even though, and I also could understand them getting the vaccine to promote its use, you know, because there's a significant part of the population that is resistant, is resistant to the vaccine. So I could understand that. Also, though, it does look a little bit elitist, I have to say, on the other side of the coin. It does look a little bit elitist to see all these government officials 
being first in line, you know, most of, most of them has come of the earth anyway. Why should they? <laughs> why should they be getting the vaccine? I can understand that argument also. So I mean, I I can't say I have strong feelings about this one way or the other because I think there are arguments on both sides of this on this particular issue in terms of who should get the vaccine and when. But I think I mean continuation of government. I could probably be weighted and be convinced by that argument to be honest, but. I don't have strong feelings about this one way or the other. Well, I, I'm uh, all for the politicians getting the vaccine and trying it out. I cannot <laughs> think of a better group that yes. is more <laughs> deserving of being guinea pigs yeah. on a on a not quite fully tested vaccine as that group. <laughs> right there. Yeah, like you said before, they were doing this to prisoners. Maybe yeah. the first group yeah, should be politicians. Yeah. Prisoners and politicians should serve as guinea pigs. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> well, after all, to a fair amount of these politicians, mm. if there was any justice, should be in jail. Too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They they true. True. Exactly. Yeah, if there was any such thing as justice. If, if, if uh, the law truly uh, was blind and, and uh, if, if all of us were uh, fully accountable under the law, like everybody says it is, then yeah, tons of them would be in prison right now <laughs> on both sides of the aisle. I agree totally. Yeah. Like I said, like I said, they are a bunch of scum. That's what they are. Yeah. So yes, I agree totally. Yeah. <laughs> I go a little, I, I'm kind of worse. I, I always say that they're lower than pond scum. That's kind of like my favorite <laughs> phrase, but yeah, scum, scum works. <laughs> if anything else, maybe the, the vaccine would, if it didn't work for its original cause, it might help in eliminating some of the yeah. other, you know, <laughs> viruses that we have in DC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pfizer comes out with an, an announcement, you know, a after uh, field testing, we have changed the formula of the vaccine <laughs> and now it truly is safe and effective. To, yeah. you know, AOC went you know, I was almost said something I shouldn't have. Uh, AOC went uh, belly up, and uh, a number of others, and so we've tweaked it a little bit. Well, 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 they would just relabel it as this is our term limits vaccine. Ultimate term limits. Yeah, let you know. Uh, let God sort them out, right? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> on a serious, on a serious note, you know, yeah. there was a a guy, forty-one years old, just got elected to Congress first time, and died of COVID um, before he was sworn in. This he died yeah. yesterday, I think, which was kind of ironic and, and, and sad. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I forgot his name is Luke something from from I think Louisiana or someplace like that. It was Louisiana, yeah. Yeah, or something like that. So, 41 uh, years old. I'm yeah. Sure. yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> looked relatively, yeah, yeah, I looked relatively healthy, but, you know, yeah. it's, it's hard to, um, you know, it's better. I, I think it's best to try and look at the large numbers as best we can. And, you know, so he's 41 and, you know, okay, uh, yeah, that's kind of a little bit alarming. But, you know, in the end, I think it's the large numbers we have to really follow. And, you know, mm -hmm. it seems to be that it's yeah. older people, much older than him, who are really sure, at risk. Sure. So, yeah. I just, I just, I just mentioned yeah. that because we were talking about politicians and scum and, and sure. vaccine and all that. But, uh, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. The, the, yeah. There's the older folks like me and Tim, right? Well, Tim, Tim, Tim more than me, me, I guess. But, yes. but the, older, <laughs> the older folks who, yeah, who are yeah. most risk, like, if they catch it, they, they have a higher chance of, of dying from it. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, speaking of vaccines, I think we're getting pretty close to the end of our show, and that's the time for our knucklehead noise patrol. Uh, so uh, we have something related to vaccines on this as well. So um, and it, usually the way we like to end things off is with something odd, funny, or ridiculous that's been said out there. Well, this is kind of, I don't know if it's funny, but uh, it's, uh, it's Fauci fudging uh, again with the public on his, uh, <clears throat> on his facts, I guess, you know, on how, how, how objective his science is. And so recently he was in an interview with the New York Times uh, about a week ago, and um, he had uh, said to them about herd immunity. I guess his numbers are changing on herd immunity. And so what he specifically told them is 
When polls said only about half of Americans would take a vaccine, I was saying herd immunity would take 70, 75%. Then when new surveys said 60% or more would take it, I thought I can nudge this up a bit. So I went to 80 to 85 (laughs) <laughs> Doesn't that just make you feel great about the objectivity of our scientists? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Government, yeah. you know, officials when they, they have that thumb right on the scale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, uh, yeah, the the little video you linked that uh to uh the two gals were talking and uh, one gal was saying, you know, my gosh, you know, if this goes on, people aren't gonna trust these uh, mouth <laughs> mouthpieces of you know the medicalist uh uh, you know, the regulatory establishment, I'm thinking that people are still listening to these people. <laughs> so, so I thought this Fauci guy, he just keeps popping up everywhere. The guy just loves the camera. Apparently he's one of those anyway. Uh, yeah. So go ahead, Leon. What do you, what do you think? I, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's, it's such a joke now, you know, this, this man, honestly, you know, I mean, this was the man who told us about masks and it turned out to be wrong. He told us about something else that was wrong. Then when he was suppo- when we supposed to be wearing masks in public, we saw him watching a baseball game w- without, without okay. a mask. And then he claimed, oh, he was just drinking water, which was a damn lie. And now he comes out with this new thing now. Oh, herd immunity. First it was 60 to 65, then it was 70 to 75, and then it was something else. Why, why should we believe this man, quite frankly? Yeah. Why should we? This man, this man moving the goalposts. Every time we he get a little bit of new information, he moved the goalposts. And then we are supposed to sit back and say, yes, sir, we understand. Please, give me a break. This man should retire. Please, go go retire, honestly. And stop, and stop giving out all this misinformation and disinformation, too. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, that that's the the crazy thing about this is, you know, our one of our most important institutions is science and supposedly the objectivity that it represents. And earlier this year, as you mentioned, Leon, he he had lied about masks. He admitted that he lied about masks. And he said at the beginning of this uh, uh, whole pandemic that he had said uh, masks are ineffective. And then he came out and said, well, the only reason I really said that is because I just didn't want there to be a run on masks. (laughs) Yeah, right. You know, he could have just as easily told people, hey, you know what? You can even make your own masks at home and they'll be more effective than nothing, you know, potentially. Right. So, right. I, I, you know, it's just it's it's terrible. But, you know, you know, as terrible as government is uh, and as long as we could go on about that, that's about all we have for the show today. Uh, but uh, if you'd like all to right. hear more of uh, our shows, you can catch it at uh, LibertarianCounterpoint.com or Facebook uh, at uh, LibertarianCounterpoint.com. And uh, thanks for joining us for the end of the year. And we'll have one more show, uh, uh, end of year show as well um, coming up. And hopefully you can catch that and join us there. And we will see you next year. Thanks. Yes. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Goodbye.